Hi, Joel MD here, also known as Dr. Bones of the survival website doomandbloom.net, co-author of the Book Excellence Award-winning fourth edition of the Survival Medicine Handbook, and designer of quality medical kits at store.doomandbloom.net. We've all heard about the strange end of actor Gene Hackman and his wife. The 95-year-old Hackman, his 65-year-old wife, and the dog were discovered dead, and not freshly so, in their home. She was found on the bathroom floor with a spilled bottle of pills while he was in another room. A deceased dog was also found in a crate in the home, while two others were found alive outdoors. Originally, I thought that she overdosed her husband, who had late-stage Alzheimer's disease, and then took sleeping pills in a classic murder-suicide. However, the wife's internet searches suggested that she suspected they might have COVID. That was not the case, however. It turns out she died a week before Hackman of a rare illness called Hantavirus Pulmonary Syndrome, or HPS. And he died some days later of heart disease, and I would think dehydration. So what is Hantavirus? Members of the Hantavirus family are mostly found in their natural reservoir, rodents. There was evidence of a rat infestation in the Hackman compound. Rats and mice are likely to be constant companions of survival groups in disaster settings, so it's important to know about them. Now, hantaviruses are species-specific, which means that each type of rodent has its own version of the virus. While infected rodents remain outwardly healthy, they can transmit the disease to humans and cause life-threatening damage. Humans get infected in several ways. Getting bitten or scratched by an infected animal, being in contact with droppings or urine, or eating or drinking contaminated food or water. Survival retreats with large stores of food, well, these are always going to be high risk for contamination by rats and mice. As a medic, your next question should be, can I get sick if I take care of somebody with hantavirus? Well, there haven't been any cases of human-to-human -human transmission in the United States, at least so far. Although Gene Hackman's wife had hantavirus, he did not. So what about Hantavirus Pulmonary Syndrome, or HPS? The initial symptoms of HPS are flu-like. Expect to see a sudden onset of fever, cough, headache, and muscle pain. Three to five days later, the infected person may actually feel short of breath and have chest pain. Respiratory failure follows rapidly due to an immune reaction gone haywire. In the Hackman case, the wife must have thought she had COVID, then collapsed. If so, you might ask, what was in the medicine bottle? Sure enough, just thyroid pills. HPS made its first identifiable appearance in 1993. Every year in the Western US, a few cases are reported. If diagnosed though, the death rate is a whopping 30 to 60%. If you do manage to survive the first few days, you'll probably recover in a few weeks, but long-term issues are possible. Let me take a minute to discuss something else. Hemorrhagic fever with renal syndrome, or HFRS. Hantavirus hemorrhagic disease was first described in, well, you guessed it, China more than 2,000 years ago. It makes appearances throughout history in Asia, Africa, and Europe. During World War I, hantavirus disease was often called trench nephritis, kidney inflammation from rodent-infested front lines. Cases were reported again during World War II, Korea, and elsewhere. Now, finally, in 1978, the virus itself was actually discovered and eventually given the name hantavirus. While HPS occurs a few times a year in the New World, 100,000 cases of HFRS, the renal syndrome, are reported annually in the Old World. The death rate of HFRS, however, is only about 1% or so, depending on the subtype. So can you treat hantavirus infection? It's already been shown that a person made ill by hantavirus in the U.S. hasn't passed it on to other humans. There is sadly no cure. Now, in normal times, treatment depends on the particular variant and includes oxygen therapy, antiviral meds, and even dialysis. Unfortunately, off the grid, there is no proven effective treatment. The medic should alleviate symptoms like fever, ensure good hydration, and generally support the patient until they recover. Survivors may take weeks to months, to fully return to normal with chronic fatigue and decreased exercise tolerance, these are commonly seen long term. Let's talk a little bit about prevention of hantavirus infection. There isn't a hantavirus vaccine, but diligent rodent proofing can help reduce the risk of infection. There are steps you can take to help reduce your risk. 
Avoid exposure to mice, rats, and their droppings. Wear gloves and a mask that covers your nose and mouth if you can't avoid exposure to droppings. Use disinfectant on areas contaminated with mouse or rat droppings. Don't use a broom to clean out droppings. Interesting, huh? Don't use a broom because it causes viral dust to enter into the air. You want to seal holes around the retreat that might allow mice and rats to enter. You want to set rodent traps in and around your home. Along the walls is best. Avoid leaving human or pet food outside. They love it. Now, assure good ventilation in the retreat. That's something that's also very important because of that viral dust that gets in the air. More information on rodent proofing a home can be found by going to doomandbloom.net. I'll show you the link below. This is Joe Alton, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health and good times were bad. Thanks for watching. Hi, Nurse Amy here. Just wanted to remind you guys not to forget to visit store.doomandbloom.net for all your holiday shopping, gifts for birthdays, Mother's Day, Father's Day, any day actually. If you want to help somebody survive a first aid issue, make sure you go to store.doomandbloom.net. And don't forget, we have the Survival Medicine Handbook so you know what to do for those emergencies. Take care and be safe.